Beam down smoke. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Nalo and today we're going to be talking about five investing tips that you need to know to profit in CSGO. These five tips are going to help you gain more efficiency and also more of a profit margin on things that you're investing on. And some of them you may already know, but that's okay. There are people out there that might not know all of these tips. So with that being said, let's get started with this video with number five. So my number five tip and probably one of the most important investing tips in CSGO is knowing the market. So knowing the market basically applies to a number of things, but basically Basically, what you need to look for in general is how the market is doing overall because in CSGO the market is very specific and also it is kind of dependent on both player counts and popularity of the game as a whole. With that being said, making sure that you know the market and knowing if it's on an upward trend or on a downward trend is really going to help you in the long run, especially when you want to make a lot of money on good terms with a market. Essentially, you just need to make sure you're analyzing and keeping track of the health of the overall market. For example, you can't just look at one skin that you're looking to invest in. You have to look at the overall market and make sure that the entire thing is on an upward trend or else you're going to make profit a bit slower than you could potentially do. There are a few months during the year that CSGO does prosper a bit more than others, so if you go ahead and figure out that trend and kind of look towards, you know, what items are doing good in what months, it'll really help you out a lot. Keep in mind that not every year is the same though. For example, some years Katowice 2014 stickers do very good in certain months, and in some years they don't do as well. And it kind of changes around, so make sure you are keeping an eye on it. That is a very important tip when it comes to investing, and that's also why investing takes a lot of research and time. So guys, my number four investing tip for this year is going to be making sure that you are investing in things that are actually going to rise. For example, there are some things that people have claimed are good investments in the past that that haven't actually risen at all or have actually decreased in price. For example, if you look at the x-ray package, there were a few people claiming that this was going to be a good investment because it was kind of a rare one-off thing. The problem is the x-ray package does not have the amount of demand that it needs to actually survive in the current marketplace. And that being said, it hasn't risen pretty much at all and pretty much wouldn't make you any profit if you would have bought it a couple months ago. Furthermore, the x-ray package is currently on a decline and will probably stay the same way for quite a while unless something absolutely crazy happens. The absolute problem with that is that there's just not enough demand, and making sure that you're analyzing the health of these items and analyzing the graphs overall to see if they can actually even increase in price, if they even have the demand threshold they need to increase in price, that's going to be very, very important. So basically to sum up number five and number four and the difference between the two of them, number five is making sure you know the health of the overall markets, and number four is making sure you know the health of the items you're actually specifically interested in. Both are pretty much equally important, but they will really be very important when you're trying to make profit, so make sure you are doing both of those two things. Moving on to my number three tip, guys, this is going to be efficiency. So efficiency applies to quite a few things in the overall CSGO market, but the most important things that it's going to apply to are going to be making sure you're making the most amount of money with the least amount of cost. So there's a few ways that you can increase your efficiency. One of them is making sure you're using buy orders. Some people tend to buy skins just outright and don't tend to use buy orders, which is kind of an inefficient thing to do because if you use buy orders, you can get skins for a lower cost than they actually will be. However, this buy order method does not actually work on skins that are rising very rapidly because it's going to go past your buy order and you're going to get priced out by other buyers who want the skin more than you do. Another option to improving your efficiency, and yes, this is an actual option, is using trade-ups. So for more expensive skins that you probably don't want to just put a whole ton into, you can actually use the trade-up method in order to kind of skew your odds towards that weapon. So for example, with the Desert Eagle Emerald German Gunder, that's a very popular investment right now, I know, and the main thing with that investment that you can actually do is use instead of 10 of the Norse blue skins, you can use two or three of them and then the rest as some kind of skin that trades up to one item, for example the MP7 anodized navy, and if you do that you can actually pay up quite a lot less for the item, although you will be taking on some level of risk. I would not recommend trade-offs for people who are looking to do safe investing, it's a little bit more for the people who just don't want to go all in on an investment and would rather get it off a random chance and pay less than, you know, buying it outright. Just make sure you keep in mind that this is not really a recommended process to obtaining items. What I would say is that trade-ups should really only be reserved for those pretty high tier items that are going to cost a significant less amount and still have good odds in trade-ups. One more very important thing when it comes to efficiency is going to be also diversity. So diversity in investing is actually probably one of the closest relations that CSGO investing and real world investing actually has. So diversity is going to refer to making sure that you are investing in a wide variety of things rather than just one thing itself. 
So for example, if I were investing in the Shattered Web operation, I wouldn't just necessarily invest in the skins themselves, I would also invest in something like the stickers because that's quite a bit different than the skins and they could act a lot differently on the market as a whole. Diversity also applies to the specific skins that you're buying, however, as well. For example, you don't want to just buy AK skins, you might also want to buy Deagle skins or Op skins because that's going to make your profile more diverse and if you lose money on one of those investments, you're go still going to possibly gain money on a different one. So with that being said, diversity is really going to mitigate a lot of the risk you can actually involve with investing. One of the biggest mistakes I see recently and when I look at a lot of inventories is people not diversifying their investments. So for example, I'll see someone just have a ton of Katowice 2019 capsules or a ton of Berlin stickers, for example, and it just doesn't really make much sense because if you're putting all your money into that one basket, if that investment doesn't do well, you aren't going to make money and you could lose money or just not gain money as fast as you could with a different investment, for example. That being said, diversity is is more of a learning process and just make sure that when you are going for an investment that is a little bit larger and a little bit more riskier as a whole, you should try to diversify and make sure you have enough money to diversify your portfolio instead of just putting all your eggs in one basket. There's actually a quote that goes along with diversifying your portfolio that was said by the streamer Mizkif and what he said was actually, don't play like you have money because that's how you lose money. And that's absolutely true. If you make sure that you aren't playing with money that you think you have, you're going to make more money as a whole. So when it comes to diversifying your portfolio, if you are buying into one thing specifically and you're saying, yes, this is going to rise in price, you're playing with fire. You're essentially saying, I already have this investment done. This is too good of an investment. It's not going to fail. And that could really end up screwing you over later. Even if what you're investing in is very safe, I would still recommend to make sure you're diversifying and not putting your eggs in all in one basket because that will help you in the long run as a whole. And it will account for a lot of the risk that could potentially happen. Also, before we move on to tip number two, I know tip number three is kind of long, but I do want to say one more tip for diversification that can really make your investments quite safe. So for example, if a new investment comes out, let's say for the Shattered Web operation, you, what you can actually do to diversify your portfolio and make the investment very, very safe and have a very good safety net is to actually also buy very old investments. So for example, in my video, I talked about the Baroque Purples and I also talked about the SG Ultraviolets. This was in the recent very popular video that I had. So with that being said, if you buy actually both of these two things, the SG Ultraviolets and the AK Baroque Purples, you're actually going to have something from completely different timelines that are completely different skin types and also completely different items. They are from cases versus an operation. There's also going to be just a number of other factors that makes both of these items very different, very distinct, and also very good investments. But those are the main things. What you really need to keep in mind with that is that you're going to be able to have a very safe investment because if those Baroque Purples fail, then you'll have a very, very different item in the SG Ultraviolet that might actually do very well. And vice versa, if the SG Ultraviolet fails and doesn't gain much price, and the Broke Purple does, you're going to have a very different item, very distinct item, that gains a lot of value. So guys, it's going to wrap up tip number three, which is basically efficiency and using all the tools available to you. Make sure you're using buy orders to increase your profit margins to the maximum level. Make sure that you're doing trade-ups if you want an item that's a little bit too expensive, but you are willing to take the risk. And also make sure that you're not putting all your eggs in one basket and you're having a very diverse portfolio. Tip number two is going to be knowing when you've done well. So knowing when you've done well is also a very important tip that I know a lot of people don't know when it comes to investing. So knowing when you've done well essentially refers to when you get an investment that actually succeeds and you sell it off. So the thing here that I've seen a lot of people do is they'll come to me and they'll say, hey, I invested in this item and I sold it for a profit of, let's say, $10, but then the item rose another $20 and I missed out on that because I sold too early. When should I figure out how to sell? Well, to be completely frank, there are times that you can potentially forecast to sell, but the more important thing here is that you are not acknowledging the fact that you made profit. So the thing is here, yes, you may have made $10 profit and you didn't make $20 extra profit that you could have had if you waited on the item. However, you gotta make sure that you're only analyzing the profit itself. You made $10, that's a very good profit margin. You made good money on the item and you didn't lose money. So overall, you did very, very well and you can go reinvest that into something new. You really should not concern yourself with the future of an item if you've already sold it off and aren't planning on investing it in the future because that item is now gone. You shouldn't regret your choices. You should just look forward and invest in new things. If you beat yourself up on every little detail of investments that you're doing, it's not going to be a fun process. And the main point of investing in CSGO specifically is that it's not only fun, but also a good money-making method. So I guess it's more of a motivational tip, but yes, you should be focusing a lot on your victories and not considering everything as a loss. And now on to the number one tip. This one I would consider is one of the best, most useful skills you can possibly have as an investor, 
and it probably seems a lot more obvious, but I'm going to get a little bit more technical here, and that will make it seem a little bit more detailed and complicated. So let's get started with tip number one, which is graph analysis. So when you first hear graph analysis, you're probably assuming that I'm just talking about steam graphs, but that's not entirely true. Graph analysis actually applies to quite a few things, and this also applies to real world investing quite a lot as well. So obviously, as the name suggests, it does refer to actually analyzing graphs. It's not just an analyzing graphs, but that is one aspect of it. If you want to analyze graphs most effectively, you need to make sure you are looking at all time frames, a weekly time frame, a monthly time frame, and the yearly time frame, or the all time time frame in some cases. And those are going to be very important to know how to do because you can see when an item does well in what months and if an item is specifically good to buy at a certain point in the year. So one example is the Steam Summer Sale. So the Steam Summer Sale is something that occurs pretty much every year, which means that you can look back on an item's graph to the Steam Summer Sale the year prior and see if the skin did well. If it did do well, then it's probably a safe bet for the next summer sale, and obviously things can change, but it's generally a good idea to make sure you're analyzing those graphs, especially the time frame of those graphs, to figure out if during a certain time in the year, an item is actually good to buy. Graph analysis is sort of something you should do on an item by item basis, and I can't really sum it all up in one video, so it's really just going to take a lot of practice and going out and looking at all these graphs and figuring out what items are best. Aside from specifically graph analysis though, is also going to be item metadata analysis. Analysis. So metadata obviously doesn't actually apply to the metadata of the item, but really just the more specific details that you can't find so actively. One of these, for example, is going to be volume. You can't really tell how much an item's volume is just from the Steam app itself, so sometimes you have to go to other sites like CSGO Stash, for example, to see the item's volume. Item volume essentially refers to how much an item is sold in one day. This is a very important tool and also a very important thing to analyze because you can see how popular an item actually is. And the popularity of an item also refers in very close nature to its demand. And so knowing its volume, you can kind of get a good concept of its demand overall if you compare its volume to other items of similar nature. Like I said, sometimes you can't find this on the Steam app itself, so sometimes you're gonna have to go to third-party sites, like for example, CSGO Stash, which is pretty much always going to have this as an option to view its volume. Analyzing this in combination with the graphs that the item actually has and making sure you're practicing this on a daily basis, figuring out how it all works is going to make you a much more smart and much more knowledge equipped investor as a whole. If the graph for an item doesn't look good, you should probably shouldn't go for it. And if an item graph does actually look good and looks like it's going to uptrend, then maybe that's something you should look for. But guys, with that being said, that's going to be all my tips for this video. Hopefully some of these helped you out. I did think a lot about them and put a lot of thought into this video. I made sure that I covered some of the more technical things and also some of the more general things. And I also make sure that I covered a lot of things that I found kind of had a high demand or kind of sort of a frequently asked question in the community as a whole. So hopefully this was a very helpful video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. And if you do want more content like this, please let me know in the description below because I will make more content like this in the future if you guys request it. It's a lot of fun to make top five videos, especially stuff where I'm able to break the video up into different sections and talk about more specific things in each of those sections. So with that being said, I really do appreciate you taking time out of your day to come watch me. Please make sure that you go join our Discord server below for more specific investing help from some of the best investors in the overall community. And make sure that you subscribe to the channel to go ahead and get those future notifications for all videos that come out. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace.